Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab, and I wanted to start off with a quote in this video. Anyone who stops learning is old, and that was by Henry Ford. And I would like to say, anyone who teaches squishing the bug is old. So in this video, we're gonna go over a few things here. We're going to bring up a couple articles that are pretty convincing nowadays that squishing the bug is an inferior mechanic to teach. And again, if you're teaching it, you're old. We'll go over a couple of those articles, we'll go over a swing experiment I did a while back, and then we'll go over the actual application of some hitters past and present. So let's start off with an article by Dan Farnsworth on fangraphs.com and this article actually was about breaking down the swing best hitters of 2012 and he had a couple of the the normal conventional wisdom dogmas that have been since demystified but one of them was squishing the bug as you can see here and like he says fairly easy one to look at with no actual measuring to do common knowledge argument is that hitters are more powerful when they can keep all their weight on their back leg and do not transfer weight during the swing coaches will demonstrate this by twisting their leg into the ground as if they wanted to squash a bug or put out a cigarette butt and what you'll find in the actual application some of these coaches will argue for certain hitters, specific hitters, which there aren't a lot of them that look like they actually squish the bug, but the ones that do, in the position that their foot is in, I ask them, Are, can you squish a bug like that? How do you squish a bug? So thus enabling the hitter to use his hips more in the swing. Never mind the fact that as you put more weight on your back leg, the more rigid your hip joint becomes, or that it puts you in a non-athletic position unsuitable, unsuitable for any move in any sport, let alone the other sport, other parts of baseball. You throw a ball, you transfer your weight to the leg closest to your target. You run, your weight transfers. You throw a punch, your weight transfers. You throw a frisbee, your weight transfers. I decided to simply look at the position of 50 hitters back feet at the point of contact to see whether their feet were exhibiting any signs of weight being put on them. Here are the results. You can see here in this little diagram, back foot. So this is bent. The back foot is actually bent where it's still on the ground. These are the ones that the squishing the bug coaches will point to as, oh, they're squishing the bug there. The ones that got to the toe, 22 of them. The one that dragged their feet or skipped it, 12. The ones that were completely off the ground, 14. So as you can see here, two of them out of 50, that is such a small percentage that could be argued for squishing the bug. As you can see, here's Matt Kemp. Okay, you can see the back foot here clearly on the toe, you don't squish a bug like that, you don't put out a cigarette butt like that. And also Shin Su Chu, again, remember this article is back in 2012, definitely not squishing a bug into squishing bug like a normal person on earth would squish a bug or put out a cigarette butt. Got Albert Pujols and Batista, you got Pujols right here, foot is completely off the ground. This looks like he was with maybe the Cardinals, looks maybe Angels-ish. And then you got Batista's completely off the ground. So let's take a look at this article. This is by the Washington Post, WashingtonPost.com. This came out a while back on Bryce Harper and was comparing him to Babe Ruth and the reason of his back foot coming off the ground. You can see this image up here. Here are Bam Bam versus the kid. So those of you out there like King Griffey Jr. as much as I do, you can see both of them skipping their back foot in this little illustration here. But what I really wanted to draw your attention to is this little highlighted in blue paragraph says Glenn Fleissig, an expert in the field of biomechanics, said the majority of hitters he studied transferred 90% of their weight to their front foot and kept 10% on their back leg at contact. Harper, of course, would move 100% of his weight forward at contact when his back leg lifts. So his back foot actually comes off the ground. That Fleissig said, would enable him to generate a ground rotational force equal to 150% of his body weight. He would probably have towards the peak of his value, Fleissig said. It's not about maximizing your ground force. It's about how much you pass up through your system. Somebody who studied biomechanics is a professional in this field, and he talked about that he's using 100% of his peak value, 100% of his weight forward at, at contact. Now forward can be defined in different ways. Some people say forward, they can look at it as a negative connotation, like you got your weight over your front leg, but that's not something that Bryce Harper, that's not his definition. It says, he says, it's so much power releasing from the front side. Harper says, I lock my front side as much as I can so I stay, so it stays straight. When it stays, stays straight, that's when my swing is at its best. When I get out there, he leaned forward with his 
with his knee bent, my swing is terrible. So obviously that's lunging. We don't want to lunge. We want to have our center mass slam up against the front leg or stay behind the front leg, but we are transferring our weight. Again, science. We're not talking about and debating human philosophy or theory. It's not what so-and-so told me in the past and he played a lot of baseball in the, at the high level or a coach at the high level told me this, uh, told me to squish the bug and it works and blah, blah, blah. We're looking at science, science, not pseudoscience. Here's an experiment that I did a while back and this is squish the bug you can see on the left, skip the back foot on the right. I took 100 swings one way and 100 swings another way as you can see. This was back in July. I think it was 2014 or 2015. 100 swings one way, 100 swings another way. Actually, the squish the bug, we weren't really technically squishing the bug. The hitter's foot was actually coming off the ground a little bit, uh, but the other one was skipping. <clears throat> so you can see here, this is a ZEP snapshot. You can see on the left, 62 miles an hour ball, uh, bat speeded impact and 70 miles per hour bat speeded impact with skipping the back foot. That's an eight mile an hour difference, huge. Bat speed impact, you can see right here. And then you can see hand speed max increased by three miles an hour with skipping the back foot. Time to impact here decreased. You can see a huge decrease actually, almost 0.02, two hundredths of a second. You can see that's a huge change. The And also the attack angle changed. It went more positive, four degrees. Unbelievable. Science experimentation. Now let's look at the application. Okay, so here's Altuve, Altuve on the left and here's Dustin Pedroia over here on the right. This is for those coaches out there that teach squishing the bug and say only, or if we show that they're skipping or they're unweighting their back leg, which is the main objective of what we're trying to do here. They'll say, well, you know, only the big guys can do that. They can only get away with skipping their back foot or, or transferring their weight forward. And uh, so I wanted to start off the application side of this analysis with some small guys. Altuve is about 5'6". I would venture to guess that Pedroia is about the same, even though he puts 5'9 on, or it's in, on baseballresource.com, he's 5'9". So here's Altuve. You can see this was, I think, a few games this last year where he hit almost hit for the cycle. Now watch the back foot. The, the squish the bugger is gonna look at this and they're gonna say, no, he's squishing the bug there. But look closely at the back foot. Look closely as it moves forward. M closely as it goes from here to there. Here to there. That's a drag. Here to there. That is not squishing the bug. He is definitely unweighting his foot. And if you don't believe me, so you can see this one, watch the back foot. Watch it skip backwards. This is what he calls scissoring, something that he copied from Miguel Cabrera. You can see his back foot actually skips backwards. So yes, he is skipping his back foot or dragging, however you want to say it, but he is unweighting his back side, much like the Bryce Harper article, Washington Post article we just talked about. Here's Pedroia. So Pedroia gets a massive amount of forward momentum. You're gonna see him, he doesn't skip too much. I think on this one he actually does, but usually you'll see him come just to his toe. But you can see him dragging that foot. You see the dirt coming up in front of his toe? That is dragging the foot, he's unweighting his backside, and he is not squishing the bug. And again, if you're gonna argue he's squishing the bug here, do you squish bugs like this? Do you put out cigarette butts like this? My hallucination is that you probably don't. Here are a couple greats. You got Babe Ruth on the left, Ted Williams on the right. Sorry, both of these are lefties here. Um, this is batting practice, Babe Ruth. In the games, you see the same, pretty much same thing, maybe not the feet together like here, but look at the back foot, watch it, track it from here to there. He skipped it and pulled it behind him. He was also swinging a 46 to 56 ounce bat. So it's like a three and a half pound bat. He had to get that thing moving. So you see him actually skipping the back foot. Ted Williams, some people will say, no, he didn't. He was, he was squishing the bug totally. Watch his back foot. Watch how it will pick up and skip behind him. He's actually scissoring, kind of like what Altuve and Miguel Cabrera do. You see the back foot is not squishing the bug here. He is scissoring here, scissoring. Now this is batting practice. So this may not be a 100% swing, but in a game, most likely this is what's gonna happen. If anything, you're gonna see a player that squishing the bug like an Albert Pujols one time I got a reader that said oh well, Albert Pujols squishes the bug because I was watching him in the cage during spring training what this person failed to realize was that in the cage he was taking 50 percent swings 50 percent swing intensity of course he's not going to be 
putting 100% of his body weight into the ball. He's not going to be 100% swing intensity. But when he gets in game, you're going to see him squ- not squishing the bug. You're going to see him skipping or dragging, unweighting his backside. We don't go to a track field and watch Usain Bolt warm up at 50%, taking a jog around, the, and he's not getting his knees up. That track uh, track coach is sitting there watching that, doesn't go to, back to his track team and say, hey, everybody, Usain Bolt doesn't lift his knees. He doesn't get his knees high. So that's, that's how he does it. So that's what we're going to do. We're not going to get our knees high. That's ludicrous. That's dumb, dumb. That is not looking at the whole picture of 100% swing intensity. What are these guys doing or gals doing? Mike Trout and Joey Votto. So here's Mike Trout over here on the left. You're gonna see back foot, he actually scissors too. You can see the back foot slip behind him, slip behind him. And we got the chest view of this right there. We'll move him over and you can watch the back foot. Skip, scissors, unweight. No squishing bugs. Yeah, he's a big guy, but remember Altuve and Des Pedroia that I showed you earlier. So don't don't tell me that oh, only the big guys can do it. They can get away with it. No, we see this a lot more than you think. You start looking for it, you're gonna find it. If you're if you're not learning, you're old. If you're teaching squishing the bug, then you're old. Look at Joey Votto. This is a swing maybe last year, or the year before, and watch his back foot. One of the best hitters OPS wise, both slugging percentage, when you bring slugging percentage and on base percentage together, OPS on base plus slugging, one of the best players ever. And this year is even, he even turned it up a notch. We just don't see it as much because of what Giancarlo Stanton did this year. But look at back, back foot, skipping. Back foot, skipping, lefty. Not a big guy. He's a taller guy, 6'2", maybe. But you can see compared to Trout, Trout's a linebacker. Over here, we got Mickey Mantle from the left side. Massive forward momentum. Massive foot skip. Bam, look at that. Massive foot skip or drag, whatever you want to call it. Massive drag. The guy did huge stuff, hit balls long ways. We have Adrian Beltre, one of my other favorite hitters. He's uh, And by the way, Mickey Mantle was 5'10", 5'11". Wasn't that big of a guy? Yes, he was a strong guy, but he wasn't a big, he wasn't a John Carlos Stan or Aaron Judge. Let me, let me put it to you that way. Adrian Beltre over here, same thing, about 5'10", 5, 5'11", 5, about 220 pound piece of muscle, slab of meat. But again, he's not a tall guy. He's not a John Carlos Stanton, right? He's not a 6'6", 260 pound guy or an Aaron Judge, a 6'7", 280 pound guy, right? So you're gonna see the back foot. On this one, we have a chest view. So this one's more, you can see toe here. I don't know if he's skipping too much on this one, but he's definitely unweighting. If we look at the chest view, which is right there. So you're gonna see, oh, we did see a skip there. So you see, and he's not squishing the bug. Again, that foot is coming forward a couple inches and he's getting up on the toe. He's not squishing the bug. We got one last one. This is one a lot of a lot of these squish the bug coaches will point to is Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds, one of the one of the better swings ever. Regardless of PEDs, he did a lot of stuff right even before that. But look at this back foot here. You can see that even though he's keeping his back foot on the ground, he's not really skipping or, or whatever. He's, this looks a little bit more like squishing the bug, but watch what happens afterwards. Watch how it shifts over, okay? You can't do that unless you got a majority of your weight on your front side, unless you transfer your weight. You can't do that with your foot. Uh, makes it a lot harder. You got to shift your weight in order to do that. That's how we walk. We shift our weight to the leg that swings in front. Once you weight down, then the back leg is free to swing through. That's how the swing works. Same thing. So he's got to be transferring, maybe not as much as some of the hitters you just saw, but you see him transferring his weight nonetheless. So I hope this video was educational for those of you squish the buggers out there, which I don't even think there's really many left. I get a few here and there, maybe once or twice a year that are arguing it to the hilt. And then they, they totally are blind to the things I just showed you today. And it's a shame because they're teaching hitters and those poor hitters are going to have to either succeed on their own, doing their own thing, or they're just end up not going anywhere with their career because the, the switch, squishing the bug is clearly an inferior hitting mechanic. And if you're doing that, you're old. <laughs> Make sure we're swinging smarter by moving better. And before I let you go, the Hitting Performance Lab wants to know, did you know that you may be losing out on eight miles per hour of average bat speed because of one commonly taught hitting technique? Have you ever heard the coaching terms? Squish the bug. 
squish out the cigarette butt. Well, we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study that will show you how we added an average of eight miles an hour to average bat speed by doing the exact opposite of squishing the bug. Click here now to get the video while it's still free.